Hey everyone, so today we find ourselves on the side of the garden and this is the west side part of the home. And there, there is some things, some little pockets on, in this side of the bed that I wanna start filling in. And that's not that much. Um, we're really starting to, you know, think of, of what we really wanna be seeing towards the end um, around fall, you know, what we want, wanna keep seeing flowering for that time. And um, there is a funny thing about this area because even though we do get full sun around this area, how we get so much clouds here in Virginia, there's so much rain. There's sometimes it's some plants that are planted down here, like annuals, for instance, they won't really get enough sun and they don't make it. So I've been starting to think of adding something underneath um, that spreads that's more, more of a, a, a part sun plant. And the other, what was it? A couple of, uh, a week ago I noticed that somebody beautiful started to flower for us. And this right here is Roseanne Hardy Geranium. This variety is from Proving Winners. It's self-cleaning and it spreads 15 to 20 inches wide. And I think that would just be perfect for this little area right there. And it does bloom, you know, it, it does do well in, in full sun, but it also does well in part sun. So I thought, why not let's go ahead and do this. Another reason why I love to have these geraniums in the garden is because um, insects don't like the smell of them. So it's, it's a great repellent to have around, a great plant to repel insects and especially wasps. For some reason, the, the scent that it sends out, wasps don't like. And we have right here on this area, Sugar Tip Rose of Sharon's, and the wasp just love the flowers. So I'm gonna see if it's true that it'll keep the wasp around from this area this time um, that we planted in the ground. So let's get going, and then we'll go ahead and show you what we have planted in this little area right here. Okay, so we haven't really mulched this area at all. Um, there's a bit of mulch there that I'm moving back. I'm gonna start making the hole right here. I can see moss in there. I love moss so much. And there's moss everywhere around here. It just rains so, so much. Even in the most sunny areas, you will see moss around our home. I'm making sure I make the hole nice and big for it. And this that you see right here is Easy Peasy Rose from Proving Winners. Um, it's grown. That's why I wanted to show y'all this area. In case, you know, for people that have, that uh, viewers that have been seeing us for a while now. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my biotone. Just a handful of it. Let me move the bag out of your way. Okay, I'm gonna start taking it out of here. So how this geranium is a perennial for us here in zone 7, 7B, Virginia, I'm able just to put, leave it out in this container. It's actually a terracotta container, it doesn't get that cold, so you can see nothing happened to the container. Um, it is um, hardy zones 5, 5A through 8B. So it's perfect for our area. But I do put on top some mulch. That's what I'm removing right now and throwing it here. I wanna be careful to not disturb the roots too much. Even though I'm using Biotone to help it, to help the roots grow back, it rooted well. I always love to see how much has grown from the roots and there you see it. And I'm starting to cover it, very simple. We amended all this soil here when we first um, got here the first year. Ooh, that rose got me. But, um, so I really don't have to do much to it. Um, I can see the difference of the soil. We have clay soil in, in our home right here in Virginia. So 
I've noticed that the plants do, they are doing really well. Okay, so there you go. It's in there. I'm hoping that it starts pushing its way out. I don't know if y'all can see it there, capture it. Ambrose is putting the camera. And I'm hoping how I said it spreads from 15 to 20 inches and I'm hoping it makes its way out here. I didn't want to have it way too out because when they come and do the, the grass for us, when they come to cut the grass, I don't want them to end up cutting it back. So I'm also wanting to give enough enough room to, if it's gonna spill, to go ahead and have enough room to move out here and, and spill. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what we have in this bed right now. So I'm giving it a drink. Even though we, it, it looks like it's gonna be raining here, which is really nice to, you know, if you're able to plant them before they, it rains. It's really good for the plants. Okay, so I think it'll make its way out, fill in there within the season. And um, another thing I wanted to say, um, Roseanne geranium, hardy geranium, is one of the most longest blooming perennials that you can have in the garden. It's one of the, that, that's actually one of the last flowers that I get to see. So it will start blooming around midsummer, and then it, it will finish blooming towards the end of fall. Um, it actually lasted for us maybe through second freeze that we had. Um, yeah, very tough plant. So I'm really happy to have it there. The reason I want it here too is because we use a lot of the purple in our garden and, and purple for us in the garden is more of like a, a neutral. We like to have a lot of more other colors around the garden, um, but we wanna have that one color that somehow it's gonna bring it all together. So I know that it's always gonna be blooming for us. Um, it's part sun, that was something that I was so worried about. And then I have here on the top, a lot of pink. This is Sugar Tip Rose of Sharon's. Um, when we first, it, I actually have three here and I feel that I shouldn't because they do put on quite a bit of growth. We'll go ahead and make sure to put on the, on the screen how big they get. Um, one could just fit, take this area. The reason I put it here is because when we arrived here uh, about two years ago, we needed to get them planted in there instead of leaving them in the containers um, before winter hit. So I haven't had time to move them this year. So that's the reason why I still have them like this. The good thing about um, Sugar Tip Rose of Sharon's is that they can't be maintained into shape. So that means that around the beginning of spring, before they start to bloom, you can go ahead and trim them down, prune them a little bit, or towards the end of fall, um, beginning of winter, when they have been done with their blooming. Um, that's a great time to go ahead and start shaping them um, so you won't lose any of the flowering for the next season. So back there, I have another rose that is Queen Elizabeth. Um, I had asked a lot of you viewers as she stared, does she go? Cause she wasn't doing that great last year, but it looks like she's staying. She's doing really good. She's already budding up. I'm leaving her there. So she's pink also. Um, and she blooms, she blooms for me quite well. It's just, I didn't like that she was losing a lot of the foliage. So I will have her blooming too, which I love that. Um, she makes her way also towards the side, of, to, towards the window. So when I get to see outside, that's very important for me too, the view. Um, you can see her pink, pink blooms and then you can see the pink blooms of Rose of Sharon, very pretty. Um, this is Firelight Panicle Hydrangea. Um, all these plants that I'm, except for the rose, all these plants on here offer proven winners. This Firelight Hydrangea has the most beautiful, beautiful color. Um, it, it turns like a fire red engine. It's just beautiful towards the end of the season. And that is something that we are able, we weren't able to, to really enjoy when we were um, back, living back in a zone 8A. And here in zone 7, um, 7B, we're actually able to enjoy the color towards fall um so then what else do we have here easy peasy rose i always rave about the also easy peasy series of roses from proven winners because they are the most easiest roses that you can grow if you're a beginner um, rose grower um, you feel kind of weird growing a rose this is for you 
you don't have to deadhead it. You don't have to spray it. It doesn't get thick. It is just the most easiest rose ever. And they just bloom and bloom and bloom all the time. It's full of buds right now. And this one's a really, um, it starts blooming. Uh, it's a pink rose and it blooms in little tiny bouquets but it has a really pretty um, dark pink that sometimes it starts changing into a light pink too. So it's really pretty. Uh, what else? And I actually had it in a quart container. So it's really nice to be seeing, watching it grow, you know, as time passes. And then right here, we just literally fixed this right here. We had a huge mess. Another plant, another example that when we arrived here, we just had to put things in the ground to make sure that they would pull out off through winter. This right here is Stand By Me Clematis. It's a bush Clematis as well from Proven Winters. It's, it has started to bloom. I knew I had a bloom right here. I don't know if Ambrose can get close over here so he can actually see the little bloom back here. It just reminds me of little fairies. And then you can see how it's starting to bud up right now. And there's actually three right there. So I'm planning on moving at least one. We will see as you know, so much that I have to, that, that we have to get going and doing right now. Um, it's just so much fun right now, figuring out the garden and putting it together. Um, so we'll see with time. But what I did do, because we, we did not, um, spring just came and things just went by so quickly. Um, we, ha we didn't have it on something that it was gonna climb up. Even though it's a bush clematis, it doesn't climb all the way up. It still needs some type of support. So what I did was put like a, um, um, what are these called? Bamboo sticks. I put some bamboo sticks and what we did was tie them up um, with, um, what are the, uh, with twine and we did like a, a triangle shape on all three of them. And we have lamb's ear on the bottom, and I did that so the roots don't get that harsh sun. It protects the roots. All clematis needs need all clematis need the roots to be protected from the harsh sun. So it's doing really well. Hopefully, this holds it enough to where maybe I'll leave them there. Um, I did somehow the one that I have towards the side is climbing up. Um, the firelight hydrangea and then right there we have a lime light standard hydrangea it gets gorgeous when it starts to bloom and I just love having it there so that one's gonna stay there um, that is really all we have here on the side there's more lamb's ear that's this little site right here it's actually the first the first thing that we planted when we arrived here um, was this side of of this long bed from the house. So that would be it. I just wanted to go ahead and share this side of the house with you of the garden since you know last year we didn't get to really show you much. So you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down below on the comments. And you know, go ahead, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like, um, ring that bell so you can know when we're going to, you know, put out, we have, we have another video out. And um, let us, let me know how you use Roseanne hardy geranium in your garden. I will see you soon. Bye.